whenever we talk about christian apologetics a lot of people ask me what do you mean are you going to make any kind of apology for the christian faith the answer is no if we have to make an apology for our faith then perhaps our faith is not worth it because if something is real if something is believable if something is solid if it has evidence then no apology is needed apology is always presented for those things which are not real and where we have something to hide actually the word christian apologetics comes from christian and apologetics where apologetics is taken from the greek word apologia we find the word in 1 peter 3:15 where it is uh, where the scripture says that if someone asks you for a reason concerning the faith that is in you you have to give them a reason answer and also you have to give it boldly to them that's the word apologia and from apologia we get the english word apologetics so let it be clear right from the beginning that in christian apologetics we are not making any kind of uh, excuse for the christian faith rather we are going to set forth reason in front of those people who ask for a reason now you may ask what kind of people ask for reasons well it's not one category there are a number of categories um for example some have decided that they are not going to accept lord jesus as lord or savior or even as a historical person they bring all kinds of objections if they have already decided that they are not going to accept any kind of evidence then it is futile to present evidence to them but let me remind you when this kind of people bring arguments it is not only they but also those who hear them who are affected they have already been affected by unbelief but those who listen to these arguments knowingly and knowingly out of curiosity they develop various kinds of doubts sometimes very sincere doubts and often they look for a reasonable answer and when such an answer is given their faith is strengthened their doubts are removed so christian apologetics has a very important function in removing doubts of those people who develop doubts because they happen to hear those people who attack the christian faith doubts also come in the course of normal life and let me start therefore with my testimony there are tens of thousands of young people in christendom who can repeat the same story i was born in a god fearing christian family my parents led me to the lord when i was a very young boy and i always wanted to be faithful to the lord in my christian life i never wanted to displease lord there was not an iota of doubt in my heart about bible lord jesus about my salvation or anything related to the christian faith but one thing changed all this from my childhood i was deeply interested in science very deeply interested and i would read every piece of literature that i could find as you know almost every piece of scientific literature available today whether it is a textbook whether it is a non fiction book whether it is a say a newspaper article they are written from evolutionary perspective they assume that evolution is true and these books are written on the basis of that assumption when you read this kind of a book or an article or a textbook a hundred times the assumption behind the textbook the assumptions behind the article gradually starts to settle into your mind unknowingly they start challenging your faith that is what happened to me i was a voracious reader and started reading everything that i could find from the fifth standard onwards or rather from the time i was 5 and by the time i came to the ninth standard in school i was full of doubts does god exist 
we prove everything with the help of science so can we prove god with the help of science and what about this theory of evolution it says that man has come from monkeys not only does it say textbooks show all kinds of fossils to prove that evolution is right or at least they claim that these fossils prove that evolution is right so by the time i came to the ninth standard i started having very serious doubts and from a firm believer i was a believer with a shaken faith i really did not know what to believe and what to reject things became worse when i moved on to the 10th and 11th standard because by the time i was in 10th and 11th standards i started reading books science books written at a higher level when i was in 10th and 11th i was i would be reading books for produce for textbooks produced for bsc and msc students non fiction books written at their level and uh, yes by the time i was in 11th i started reading scientific journals because uh, they were available easily in a library very close to our house my situation was very difficult deep in a, in my heart i knew i was a child of god i was saved i had no doubt about these two things that i am saved and i am a child of god but other than these two i started doubting everything in the christian faith for example who wrote the 66 books of the bible how can we know that they are god's word and when a uh, lot of scientific theories claim that man has come from monkeys then how can we believe in the genesis account which says that man was created directly by god and what about all those fossils that's a question which bothered me very much they claim that there are millions upon millions upon millions of fossils that show that life has evolved from lower organisms and gone to higher and higher and higher level of organisms finally becoming human you have to pass through this kind of an experience to know what a conflict it creates in the heart of a young person in the heart of a teenager and then finally i reached bsc first year and in first year i had a deep desire to know the truth i kept on praying lord show me the truth i know i am your child i know lord jesus died for me but lord other than these two things everything i have doubt about everything that time there used to be a christian bookshop very close to our house one day i visited the bookshop casually i was going through the books and suddenly i saw a book bible and modern science and i said lord this is the book i need because the title itself shows that this is a subject that i want to know more about so i pulled out the book looked at the cost searched through my pockets and i could find only half the cost of the book in my pocket i stood there upset sad what to do the brother who was a member of our church who looked after this bookshop he realized that i was passing through some kind of an internal struggle so he came to me he addressed me by my pet name and asked tell me what's what's the problem i'll try my best to solve it i told him uncle i very badly need this book i am sure it can answer many of the serious questions i have in my heart but i have only half the price half money for half the price he looked at the book he took whatever i had he said listen i don't get a high salary this is a mission shop mission book shop they don't make much money through the book shop and therefore they cannot give me a very high salary but whatever they give me give me from that i'll pay the rest 
you take take away the book you read it you be happy in the lord so he paid for the remaining half i took away the book and believe me the first 10 pages and i said lord you have answered my prayers this is the exact resource that i needed to overcome my doubts the book was about 250 pages long and in almost one sitting i read half of it and for the first time in 4 to 5 years of doubt i said lord now i know that there is no conflict between bible and science that was the day restoration of my spiritual life started i was in bsc first year you may ask where all your questions answered the answer is no i used to read widely each year i used to read hundreds of science books so my doubts were numerous not all those doubts were answered in one sitting or by one book but this one book opened my eyes that resources are available to answer my questions answer my doubts it took me another 13 to 14 years of reading and studying books on christian apologetics to get answers to all my questions but the first book itself gave me sufficient number of answers to restore my faith so that question can be answered in this way this book did not answer all my doubts but this one single book did answer sufficient number of my uh, my questions and my doubts to start restoring my faith from that day onward i started growing in my spiritual life within a few months the lord brought many more very wholesome christian books to me one of those books three fold secret of the holy spirit by james h mcconkey touched me very deeply and there itself i knelt in my room and said lord if you ever call me into full time christian ministry i would be ready to leave my job and get into full time ministry of course such a time came but that was uh, another 14 years away but my restoration please look at my history here i was a born again boy god fearing boy no vices wanted to lead a life pleasing to the lord did not I did not move in the company of people who attacked the bible i was very curious and that curiosity made me read many books and those books simply attacked and eventually wiped out my faith a lot of my faith lot of the components this is the story of thousands upon thousands of young people young teenagers you may ask how do you know the answer is simple once i started speaking on these subjects once i started writing on these subjects once i released correspondence courses free correspondence courses on bible science evolution thousands upon thousands of young people wrote to me over the last 40 years or more that this is exactly what they needed they were struggling with doubts related to bible science evolution reliability of the christian faith and and existence of god and a lot of other topics so my friends christian apologetics is a very important subject it's not meant the purpose of the subject is not to go and argue with people the purpose is not to argue and defeat them some occasions for argument might come across our our life some arguments to debate and defeat them might also arise but that's not the main purpose the main purpose of christian apologetics is 
to help those who face doubts in their Christian life. That's why Christian apologetics was developed. That is why it is still being developed. And that's why each one of us should definitely study Christian apologetics. Oh, you may say, brother, I have no doubts. Fine. You might not have any doubts. But suppose tomorrow if somebody, some young person comes to you and asks his or her questions, how would he answer? Would you just say, oh, you go pray. The Lord will reveal it all. That's the way many people do. That would be similar to someone going to a doctor, asking him to give medicine and doctor, if the doctor says, well, I guess you need to pray a lot about your sickness. Of course, they need to pray. But if a doctor doesn't prescribe the appropriate medicine, he is running away from his duty. In the same way, if a Christian who knows that there is a subject like apologetics, but still refuses to study that subject, he is running away from his duty. You may say, brother, I don't have a background in science. Well, you, you don't need a background in science to study the basics of apologetics. Apologetics is a vast subject and anyone from any background, science, arts, history, sociology, can study apologetics. Of course, you might not be able to study, understand or master those areas where, say, physics is needed or where philosophy of physics is needed. But then physics or philosophy of physics is not everything in Christian apologetics. Christian apologetics is made up of historical information, psychological information, sociological information, archaeological information, and these are areas which most people can understand. Once you understand, even if you are not able to reproduce it, because you are not a specialist in that subject, you can always point the inquirer in the right direction. You can say, read such and such book. If you are not, the, if you are not a doctor, but if a sick person approaches you, you would always refer that person to the right kind of a doctor. In the same way, Christian apologetics, if you study the basics of it, you can help people directly, you can help people indirectly, you can refer them to the right person, you can refer them to the right book. And if you are in the habit of stocking a reasonable amount of apologetic resources, you can help people beyond what you ever think. So in the coming days, we will be studying Christian apologetics. We will look at the foundation. We will look at the tools of apologetics. And we will also briefly look at the history of Christian apologetics. My aim would be to give a general background first, a little more specific background after that, and also give you a lot of tools of Christian apologetics. These tools can be used by almost anyone. And as you know, the right tool makes much difference when you're trying to do something. Thanks for listening to me. And please come back. We have a lot more in store for you. Please remember one thing. Don't hesitate. Don't, uh, don't hesitate to listen to these lectures. Don't say, oh, well, I won't understand. How do you know unless you listen to it? Listen to these lectures that you wouldn't understand. Let me assure you, you would understand. My aim would be to make the subject as simple as possible so that anyone and everyone who tunes to these, this series would be able to understand it. There may be a few very specific super, special, super specialist subjects, but they are not for everyone. You can ignore those subjects, but you would be able to understand everything other than those super special subjects. God bless you.